Hello once again, Ohio. This is the Retirement Blueprint Show with Tim Lofton of Axum Planning and Wealth. I'm your host, Spike Spangle, and every single week, Tim likes to help you with retirement planning solutions. Tim, what's on your mind this week, my friend? I want to talk about some of the hidden concerns that people aren't re actually thinking about in retirement right now. You mean it's not just running out of money? Well, I mean, that, that is the big one. Everybody <laughs> knows about that one. Okay, uh, I'm so talking some about some of the things that maybe people aren't aware of. Uh, there's, okay. there's a situation, uh, we just saw a report that just came out, you know, $20 billion last year uh, was taken from retirees. And I'm not talking about yeah. taxes. I'm not talking about inflation. I'm talking about from people they knew. And is this, is this more of a function of well, I mean, I'll always say having a plan in place, but not having the right people in place. I mean, because look, some, some of this from what you shared with me actually comes from the family members. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that we've got our funds for ourselves, our savings. So this goes back to a longer conversation we've had before. Should we put our things into a trust? Is a will enough? What happens as we get older, those things like medical directives and mental medical directives and mm -hmm. all that? Um, or is it more of the brand new digital scamming and, and how aggressive people are with that today? Well, and we've talked about the scams that are out there and they're more prevalent than they ever have been. This is really going deeper into, uh, you know, maybe trusted family members that for whatever reason maybe shouldn't have been trusted, uh, caregivers. Uh, you know, when, when you start giving control of your bank accounts and those types of things to someone, you need to make sure that it's done in a way where you're not giving them full control, uh, whether it's through a power of attorney or making sure that there's a second set of eyes on things. Uh, you know, one of the things that we have, and, and this, this goes back to a client that we had, they had, there was four siblings. One sibling was essentially the main caregiver, which is a lot of times the case. And you know, her oversight was that she had control of everything. And she actually brought it to us. We were going to mention that to her. And she actually proactively said, I wanna make sure that, that my two brothers and sister also have access to be able to see exactly what I'm doing. And that, it's those types of steps that a lot mm -hmm. of times people don't think about. It's like, well, you know, my, my one daughter lives local, the other three are out of state, but because of the digital age, it's easy to give passwords and for people to get duplicate statements so that there is some accountability and some oversight. Uh, you know, making sure that, you know, if you're in a situation, we had another client that was going through some dementia and, you know, we recognized it before the kids did and being able to bring that to their attention because those are the people that are most at risk to be taken advantage of. Right. Th do you mind if I ask you what, what were some of those earmarks that, that you saw when you said that you found it even before the kids did? Well, you know... Was it erratic it, spending or...? No, it was really just during one of our reviews that, you know, oh, uh, down me face and, face. And, and one of the other partners said, there, there's something off there. There's not, there, you know, the normal conversations that we had, they, they were forgetting things within the conversation. Um, and it, there was just some signs. I mean, this is something that obviously we've seen a lot of over the years. And being able to, uh, in, in this case, all of their kids were out of state. And so, it, you know, normally what happens is, you know, you have the, the local uh, child that's over there all the time and you know they pick up on you know mom and dad or you know maybe a little bit more forgetful than they used to be in this case we proactively reached out to the family members and we had permission wow. to do that uh, to say hey you know maybe have them get checked out just to make sure because they have you know some markers and things that they can they can do yeah. from uh, and, and it turned out that they that both mom and dad were entering some of the early stages of dementia. That's interesting because your responsibility as a financial planner is, is to take care of them as a financial planning firm and a retirement specialist yourself. But where that hops over the shark for me is that uh, a doctor couldn't necessarily do that. They couldn't just say, hey, I'm worried about your parents. But at uh, your firm, you're actually able to take on that responsibility and say, I think I need to tell somebody about this. I think I need to reach out to the family. One of the things that we do is we have a, a, a trusted advisor list. So this is people that 
uh, our clients have okayed that you know if there's a problem that we can reach out to them and they actually sign mm -hmm. a document giving us that permission. Uh, so this isn't something where we were outside the lines of you know doing something that we shouldn't have done. We we always get permission to do that yeah. for this exact type of reason. Right. And the as we were saying before, the, the digital scams, they're becoming a lot more aggressive. But having a financial advisory team, now I know you're not monitoring their accounts every single day, but you can also see if there are erratic spending habits mm -hmm. starting to happen or overly sized withdrawals that don't normally happen, correct? Right, and for most of our clients, we don't have large cash positions because they typically hold those at the bank. So they you know, typically are gonna have to call in uh, if they're wanting to make a big purchase or do something like that and say, hey, you know, I'm gonna do this, and that gives us that opportunity just as, a, as another layer of protection to say, hey, you know, there's a difference between, uh, you know, we want to buy a boat or we want to buy an RV and, you know, we, we got this email from this prince in Saudi Arabia that wants them to send us $50,000. Well, well, okay. I think, I think a lot of our viewers are probably aware of that one right now. I get it right now. My dad and I got the same kind of text. Uh, your UPS package was undeliverable. Click on this link below to make sure your package gets delivered. I'm like, I don't have anything coming. I don't think I have anything coming. And my dad and I both got it within 12 hours. And we're like, Jump. I got the same thing. <laughs> and no, it see, was Tim, different. Though, I did send you Mine didn't say undeliverable. It showed that it was going to be delivered to the wrong address, like an address that I didn't recognize. Mm -hmm. And I actually called UPS. And they said, yeah, that's, that's a prevalent scam going on right now. And you click into it, and it wants you to put in you know, your information. Right. Right, just all of these things that, that we want to be aware of, but by being able to monitor those withdrawals and so forth, it just as a safety factor, not that you're watching it every single day, but to know that you've got kind of a backstop, a financial backstop watching over you. Folks, we're going to take a very short break right now. If you would like to get started on your own retirement blueprint, to have a financial advisory team, a retirement specialist, financial advisors, estate planning help, even talking about Social Security, Medicare, how and when you should take your long-term care. All you got to do is call the phone number right here. We'll get you started on your own complimentary retirement blueprint. We're with Tim Lofton of Axum Planning and Wealth right after this. My most rewarding moment for helping clients is seeing the fear of the unknown disappear from their face. You know, some people are worried about a potential nursing home stay. Some, it's market volatility and losing their money in their investment. Some are just genuinely concerned about the direction of the economy. But for the most part, the whole taking away of fear and concern starts with having a plan. Not something off the shelf, but something customized to that family where we can sit down and get to know them intimately to understand what their hopes and dreams are. What do they want to have happen after they're gone? And make sure that those things happen. The retirement blueprint is exactly that. It's a blueprint for retirement. It's built off of the five cornerstones of retirement planning. That's developing an income plan, creating a tax plan, an estate plan, a long-term care and health care plan, and of course, the investment plan. And the best part is we have a team of people to come alongside to do all of those things that have the credentials and the expertise and the years of experience to make sure that everyone is coming together to create the best plan. It takes those worries out of their head and puts solutions down on paper. Welcome back to the Retirement Blueprint Show with Tim Lofton. I am your host, Spike Spangle, and we're talking about some of those hidden things you might not be aware of in retirement now, uh, the digital theft and sometimes even family theft from our retirement accounts. Uh, it's becoming more prevalent. We want to make sure you've got protections in place. You said there were some staggering numbers across the country of how theft is affecting retirees today. Yeah, I mean, we understand, you know, you know, as we were talking about earlier, $28.3 billion uh, that was taken away from, from retirees through people they knew, through caregivers, family members. But understand what that impact is over time. Uh, they've estimated almost $1.3 trillion by 2040 because of this type of theft. Because, the, you know, if you think about it, these retirees don't get this money back. 
And most of the time they don't even report it because it's a family member or someone they care about and they don't want to get them in trouble. Uh, but if that money is gone, it's gone. And yeah. how are we going to take care of uh, those retirees? Like yeah. And they've estimated almost $1.3 trillion impact to state and federal governments because of this type of, of theft. I, you read something terrible like that nearly every single day, online news and so forth, mm -hmm. somebody who lost a life savings to something. So I, our whole point on this, it's not to scare you, it's make sure that you've got your financial ducks in a row. Make sure you've got somebody who's maybe a financial backstop for you, who knows where your investments are, number one, who you trust, number one, who you have faith in, and maybe who does this all of the time. And that's, that's part of what we can do here at the team of Axum Planning and Wealth. And involve the whole family, yeah. right? I mean, if, if and, and you know what? They don't have to know dollar amounts no, or account no. numbers, but just say, this is where this is. This is what I want to trust you with. And mm -hmm. this, if something happens to me, if you're starting to notice I'm slipping, uh, call this phone number. This is my financial advisory team, our retirement specialist team, right? And a lot of times the, the risk is uh, most often, um, you know, people keeping too much cash at home for, you know, for whatever reason. Or are we there, still stuffing cash in the mattresses? We still are stuffing, you know, I've had more clients that have had a parent pass away that they find money. Uh, it's World War II generation depression raised yeah. kids yeah. that were taught, you know, you don't know, banks might close. Oh, and we've heard this story so many times. The takeaway right. here is do not demo mom and dad's home. No. <laughs> Look don't. To, do, take the books and take shake them a little bit apart. and make sure that there's uh, there's no spare $100 bills just floating around in there. Yeah. So uh, other things that, that we want to talk about. So let, let's turn around. Let's be a little bit positive. And the retirement income puzzle. Okay, the puzzle, puzzles can be fun, but this is also kind of an unknown. It's how do we put these pieces together? And unfortunately, when we're doing that retirement puzzle, a lot of times it feels like we're trying to put this thing together without the picture on the box. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell me what the, the pieces are of the retirement puzzle for you. Well, you know, it all starts with making sure that people know where they're going. Uh, it's identifying how much income are you going to need on a monthly basis in retirement and how long do we have to get there? that's going to allow us to look at things like inflation and taxes and what impact that's going to be along the way to make sure, number one, that we get to the right number, and more importantly, that we are saving enough on a monthly basis to get there. That's the start point. You know, today we have uh, probably some of the most literate uh, retirees that get to retirement and they're pretty well versed in, in, in how they got there. They knew about savings and, and the education today I think is better on investing in, in the online tools and all the things that are available to us. But that doesn't make them literate on retirement income. That's a totally mm -hmm. different strategy yeah. and it's a, it's a transition that a lot of times retirees miss as they get into retirement, they just continue to do things the way they've always done them. Right, and, and I think a lot of folks, we've talked about this on your weekly radio show, that folks come into your office planning in best case scenarios. Mm -hmm. Figure out, right, we've got this saved, house is close to paid off, if we turn on the social security here, looks like we should be all right. But there's a lot of other parts of the calculation that they've there's left moving out. moving parts. Let's, yeah, what are some of those, what are some of those? Well, I mean, if, if you think about the things that we have control over, we, get, we control basically three things. You know, how long we work, how much we save, and how much we spend. That's what we have control over. But if you look at all the things that we don't have control over, inflation, taxes, uh, what the government's going to say in changing the rules. When you look at, you know, Social Security right now, one of the biggest subjects today is, is Social Security going to look like it does today five years from now, 10 years from now. What impact could that possibly have on my retirement? So, you know, looking through, you know, the, the changes that we're seeing today mm -hmm. in, in what we know. I mean, the government is saying Social Security is going to change. Yeah, they're telling us. This they're is telling a, us. This is, we're not scaring news no. this. We're not clickbaiting this right now. This is actually coming from your statements from SSA.gov saying mm -hmm. there could be a reduction on your benefits right. as much as 20% in the next decade. Right. And you look at the legislative risk of, you know, we're talking about taxes today, uh, sunsetting in 2025. 
and you know what is going to happen. Well, sunsetting that sounds pleasant. Yeah, what I mean, is, I like a sunsetting? sunset. Well, if you're on the beach, it's great. When it's uh, your your current tax bill, not so much. You mean it's sunsetting back to the higher rate back to of the higher loss. rates. Now that could change. That may not change. It's still to be determined. But you can see there's a lot of unknowns. When we start looking at retirement planning, things outside of our control that we still have to factor into our plan. Okay. One more though that I think, again, folks coming in planning best case scenario is their own longevity. Mm -hmm. Most people will say, look, I'm going to live to 75, 80, 82. I just take my plan out to there. What do you comfortably take the plan number out to? I like 110. <laughs> 110. That, 110 is my number. That's a newer, bigger yeah. number. I haven't so, heard that one from you, so Tim. So here's, here's a, a, a situation. Uh, we just we just brought on a new client. She's 82 years old. <laughs> ah, and brand so new young client. She awesome. called into the show, and you know we so I she said how old she was. And so you know I'm expecting 82. This lady walks in, and she looks like she's in her early 70s. She's not on any medication. She's got a personal trainer. I mean, just a picture of health. And I asked her, I said, well, you know, how long did, did mom and dad live? And they said, late, late 90s. And so... It's so already. It, it's, a, it's a real thing. And, you know, here's the thing. If, if you're wrong and, and you don't live to be 110, what's the harm? You, you died with a little bit of extra money. If you say, hey, I'm going to die at 75 and live to 110, what happens? Okay, well, then you run way short. You run way short. And so there's not a way to, to know exactly how long we're going to live. But here's what I know. People are living a lot longer today and a lot healthier today than they were 30 years ago. We, we talk about Social Security when it started. The average life expectancy was 64 years old. And Social Security starts at 65. There was no funding problem with Social Security when people died the year before they were actually going to get to take it. Now you look at the average married couple, the chances are one of them is going to live into their mid-90s. So what's to say over the next 30 years with today's science and modern medicine that that number is not going to continue to increase? And the good news is, is that people are living healthier longer. Mm -hmm. So it's not uncommon for us to be... No longer seeing doctor commercials with cigarettes right. saying, this it, is healthy for you. <laughs> We're all living healthier. And, and it's no longer the, you know, I'm going to turn 80 years old and I'm going to you know, sit in a rocking chair and watch TV all day. We're, we're still going on cruises. Mm -hmm. We have personal trainers. Uh, you know, there's, there's active lifestyle, and that's not free. That's not cheap. Right. And so we have to plan for that potential outcome. Yeah, it's almost kind of a mind blow for me. It's 82 years old, fantastic, mm -hmm. so awesome. Were you able to talk to her about long-term care? Do you think that window is passed, or do you think it's going to start opening wider for older ages because we are living longer? Mm -hmm. Well, in, in her particular instance, she actually told me, I'm not going to a nursing home. I won't have to. And I love the confidence. Uh, but she also recognized the, the need for long-term care planning. And for her, it's going to be more done with the estate planning side than the actual paying for it. Uh, we're going to be able to do some trust work and some other things to help her with that. Okay, Tim, we're going to take a very short break right now. Folks, call the phone number you see on your screen right here. We want to get you started on your own retirement blueprint. We're going to take it out to the age 110. Or we'll talk to you about the longevity in your family and see what's a reasonable number for you. But we want to make sure that you don't run out of money in retirement, not just for you, but for your spouse and family. Get your own no-cost retirement blueprint by scheduling your appointment today. One more of the hidden risks in retirement right after this. As a good saver, you've been putting away money during your working years. Studies find that the biggest fear of retirees is running out of money. Market volatility isn't just a downward movement of stock prices, it's the size and frequency of change. The more dramatic the ups and downs, the higher the volatility. This can put savers who are newly retired or a few years away from being retired at greater risk. Today's generation of retirees is not receiving traditional pensions as our parents or grandparents did. Instead, we have retirement accounts such as 401ks or 403bs. These accounts typically expose your money to market risk. The last thing you want right before retirement is to lose a portion of the money you need for income. But how do you turn these accounts into a retirement income? 
Is it safe to keep all your retirement money sitting in the stock market? The last thing you want is to lose a portion of the money you need for income due to market loss. By working with a financial professional, you can learn how to turn a portion of your savings into an income stream for life and income for the life of your spouse if you're married. We all have moments in our lives when we wish we had taken action sooner. Don't let procrastination rain on your retirement parade. Act now before it's too late. Please call our office to set up your no-cost, no-obligation retirement income review today. Welcome back to the Retirement Blueprint Show with Tim Lofton. I'm your host, Spike Spangle. Today, we're talking about some of the hidden risks you might not be as aware of in retirement. We were just talking about longevity risk. I love this. You had a brand new client come in at 82. Mm -hmm. uh, you're taking the plan out to hopefully the age of 110, maybe beyond that. Uh, let's stay in this lane. I, I love your client scenarios. Who else have you been helping out recently? So, you know, one of the things about longevity risk, a lot of times we talk about longevity risk in the idea of us living, you know, a lot longer than what maybe we were planning on. And when I say planning on, I mean running out of income because we didn't save enough to live as long as we actually ended up living. The other issue that, you know, and this is a client uh, that we had, uh, this is probably two or three months ago, that the husband and wife, there was a significant age difference. There was a gap there of wow. about 12 to 15 12, okay. years. All right. yeah. And so, you know, one of the other problems that you can run into is that if you have a partner that's a lot younger, we still are looking at, if they're retiring at the same time, a much longer retirement runway. And so as we're looking at things like spousal income continuity planning, I love throwing that out there. Oh, great. That's, 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 that's good stuff. That's really right? sticky. Yeah, that's really viewers. sticky. People are like, yeah, spousal income continuity planning. I'm definitely going to tune in for this. The idea here is that if you lose a spouse, what happens to your income? Uh, can I, so when you're saying, uh, let's say, just 12 years, was this 50 and 60 or 60 and 70? What, it, it was 52 and 62. Wow. So Actually, wow. 52 and 62. And they did both want to retire at the same time. Yes. So she would be retiring 50s. She was going to retire early. Uh, she was a teacher. And so she had her years in to be oh, able to oh, so retire. she's got a pension. Because the first thing that was going through my mm -hmm. small little mind was, what about her health care? Because that would be a lot of years of paying out of pocket. It, it is. And, and, that, and that's another thing. You know, when we start talking about uh, early retirement, you know, that's another risk that we can add to what we're talking about here. Because if we retire early, a lot of times those pensions, Social Security haven't kicked in, that health care cost is another component. In their case, it was really more of what happens because they both had pensions. His pension and her pension were what they were going to live on. She didn't get Social Security as a teacher. He did. Um, mm, the, but she got a pension. So but she, she had a, wiped she, out Social Security, but she gets a pension. But she gets a pension. He had a pension and Social Security. The issue is with, with them is she doesn't qualify for Social Security, even his Social Security, because of being a teacher. Uh, that's just the way, it, the way it is in Ohio. And that's the Ohio State Pension yeah. for the teacher's plan. Okay. The, so when we looked at the fact that they were living on both of these sets of income, if they were to lose half, in this case, of the income, was figuring out what are we going to do? How are we going to replace that income? Both of them were very healthy. Both of them had, you know, pretty active lifestyles. And so odds are, you know, that'll be a, a number of years down the road, but you're still talking about a 12-year difference in age. So mathematically speaking, you know, there is certainly that chance. And so we were able to come alongside them and take a portion of the assets they had on the investment side and set that up for future income to essentially replace his pension if something happened to him. That, because I, I literally, I had to follow that one down myself. So the husband passes away. Let's say he passed away first, because mm -hmm. actuarially, that's usually what happens, and he was older. And he was older. So she would not be eligible for his Social Security. Correct. His pension goes away. Correct. And now we got to hope there were other assets there, and all she'll have is her pension. So you almost, in a way, had to come up with a retirement plan just solely based on what she had and what we were thinking were going to be the remainder of assets. Right, because as long as, in, in this case, they were living off of the pension and Social Security. They didn't need any of their investment dollars, which was perfect in this scenario because we were able to invest those fairly conservatively, but for growth to be an income replacement down the road. 
I got to ask you this, though. So there's a lot of our viewers out there who are not fortunate enough to have a pension plan, let alone two pension plans in one family. Mm -hmm. Looking at retiring in our 50s and 60s, is that still realistic today if we don't have a pension plan to support it? Well, there's, there's two reasons why it's really not. One is, what are you going to do? Because that's the first question that I ask every person that gets ready to retire, regardless of age. How are you going to spend your day? Explain to me what it is you're going to do. Because one of the things that we see with a job is it gives us purpose. It gives us a lot of times community. It gives us a reason to get up every day. And so I need to understand if someone's getting ready to retire early, what's going to get you up every day? Because it can't be golf. You know, it, you, that's good for six months. It's not good for 25 years. Mm -hmm. So as we're thinking through the, the retirement process, most people are not going to retire early. In fact, we're seeing exactly the opposite, where people are actually working into their 70s, uh, not because they have to, because they want right. to. Right. We've talked about this before, though, the, the great feelings that come on in get an evaluation, whether it's us or someone like us, is that you might enjoy that purpose of what your job is or what you do, or maybe you could start working a part-time or work contract and keep doing what you're doing. But if you know that you can go into retirement, mm -hmm. then you get to enjoy that, that career that you enjoyed so much, uh, so much more. Now, um, again, going back to case scenarios, working with people, individuals and so forth that's what we do here you know mm -hmm. it, we're not just broadcasting what's going on here we want you to call the phone number so you can come on in for your own retirement blueprint tim with a minute left here why don't you tell the folks exactly what that is for you the retirement blueprint is a written plan and it's customized it's not an off the shelf one size fits all we're going to take a look at a tax plan an estate plan a investment plan long-term care and health care plan and making sure that you get to retire and stay retired through a written plan designed by us for you. The hidden risks in retirement, it's, uh, it's not just your golf game, huh? It's not the golf game. <laughs> it's the longevity, the inflation risk, the economics of everything that's going on. So you don't have to go it alone. Thank you so much for watching the Retirement Blueprint Show with Tim Lofton, but you can do one more thing for yourself. It does not cost you anything. You just got to pick up the phone, set up your own appointment, and get started on your own retirement blueprint. It's that simple. Come on into the office. It's not about a product. For us, it's a process. We want to get to know you and see if we can help you along the way. Get your own retirement blueprint right here. Call the phone number you see right here. Thank you so much for watching, and we will be back again next week.